welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Okay, I've got a puzzle haul for you today. I've been acquiring new puzzles over the last few months and I feel I've got enough now to show you a batch of them. And there's some that I'm really, really excited about in this wee stash. So I'm going to start off by talking about uh, this pile of puzzles or three piles of puzzles to my right. So I have been purchasing a whole heap of 500 piece Ravensburger puzzles recently. And I've split this into three piles because some of which I've actually already built, one of which, two of which have been on the channel in videos of their own. I think I've shown you pictures in the community tab of some of them, but I just want to kind of go over them and let you know what the thinking is behind buying them all and things like that. So in case any of you don't know, I will be attending the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships in Spain this year in September. So I need to get my speed puzzling practice going, probably at a quicker rate than I'm managing at the moment. <laughs> but I do, I do have a whole bunch to go at and a whole bunch to practice with. So we'll start with these. These are the ones I actually haven't speed run yet. Two of them still have the cellophane on. This one I really love. I bought this, I just love the image. It's called Polygon Lion. This one looks really hard. I'm actually quite nervous about speed running this because it's really pretty. It's all kind of geometric shapes um, to make up this lion's face, but there's quite a lot of dark areas here and here and kind of scattered about up here. So I think it's gonna be quite difficult, but I'm really looking forward to speed driving this to see how I do with it. The thing is I want to try lots of different types of images as well because you don't know what you're going to get at the Worlds until you open the bag and it could be anything. So I think that's going to be really fun to do. So that's Polygon Lion. Another one I purchased uh, that still has a cellophane on is this one here. Now this is a funny one because it seems to only have the name of the puzzle on here in German and I don't know what it means but I will find out and I will put a graphic up and let you know assuming I've got it right and this is the name of the puzzle here but anyway this one is it's like an underwater scene so it's kind of a dark background like in the deep sea and all of the sea creatures in it are kind of neon coloured. So it's very sort of blue overall, but there's also a lot of colour. But this one looks quite tough as well. But I'm just, I chose this image just because I really liked it again. But I think this is going to be another one that will be fun to speed run. So that's that one. This one is new to me, but it is a used puzzle. I got this from a charity shop. And this isn't my type of image, really. It's called The Factory Worker. And it's basically... It's like a kind of a vintage car manufacturing plant and the cars are all kind of vintage. It looks like it might be easier to speed run than the two I've just shown you. There's, there's obvious kind of blocks of colour here that you can sort into and things like that. As I say, not normally the kind of image I would buy to puzzle, but I found this in a charity shop and it was only £2. So I thought, well, you know, it's just more practice for the worlds. And again, still, I don't know what the image is going to be like. Could be something like this, could be something like the polygon lion. I have no idea. So it's just going to be good practice, I think, just to do different kinds of puzzles, whether I like the images or not. So that is that one. My next pile are other puzzles I bought to practice for the worlds, but I've actually already speed run them. And I'm probably going to do some videos on my speed runs and my practice for the world. So I'm not going to tell you the times in this video, but look out for that because I will be bringing videos out of all my practice uh, attempts on these puzzles. But anyway, this one here is called the New York Postcard. It's the one I've done most recently and it's the same kind of theme and design as the London Postcard puzzle. Now the London Postcard you may be familiar with because I speed ran this I think it was last year. It was the very first speed run I ever did. And actually it remains my fastest to date. <laughs> so I don't think, that's not a good sign really. It means I'm not improving. But anyway, it's you can see it's really, really similar. You've got kind of a monument to the city in question right in the middle. So on, um, on the London one, it's Big Ben. And on the New York postcard, it's the Statue of Liberty. And there's all splashes of color all around and flowers and birds and, all kinds of different things going on all around it. So I really do, I really do like the images on these. And when I saw that there was another one, I thought, I'll oh, get that because I think it'd be really fun to do. So that's the New York postcard. Right, the next one. 
this one here and again I've speed run this one I got this one as practice for the worlds but I also did a wee mini competition on this one with Judy from Addicted to Puzzles I'll link her channel in the description below she had this puzzle already and we've been chatting to each other on instagram and we said oh let's do a speed run on it so i picked up this puzzle and we did a wee speed run and um if you want to know the times on that one you can go have a look at instagram we both put our results up on there again i will probably include this later on in a video about speed run practice and things like that so i won't give the times just now but this was a really fun one it was quite it was harder than it looks like this this the teacups and the cat really did slow me down on this one but it's a really cute image and it's called kitten in a cup so you know just what it says on the tin really <laughs> it's literally a kitten sitting in a little stack of cups and um there's flowers and things going on in the background so that is that one that judy and i did as a speed run okay i'm gonna have to stop putting some of these down on the floor i've got my big board out at the moment because a present underneath all of these puzzles is the artistic mickey 5000 piece puzzle which is in progress <laughs> but the board kind of hangs over the side of the table so i'm a little bit worried about overbalancing it so i'm gonna just move some of these puzzles off as i go right this one is another one i bought in preparation for the worlds and I have speed run this as well. This one is called My Loyal Friends, I think. Yes, My Loyal Friends. And I got this one because it was one of the puzzles from uh, last year's World Championships. And again, quite tough, but really fun to do, really cute. It's got lots of black Labradors all over it, what, including one actual, actual Labrador and then a whole bunch of pictures in the background. There's some flowers and a wee telephone there and all kinds of things going on in that image. So um, I did that one as well, and that was really, good fun this one i really liked and this is actually very similar to another one that i've got as well which i'll maybe show you at the same time so this one is called garden visitors and it really is just kind of collage of different animals that would come and visit your garden so we've got a hedgehog and we've got a pigeon and there's a fox and there's a squirrel and various birds and things like that and it's kind of like a it's kind of like watercolor it's like a watercolour painting and the background's just kind of a solid, solid bluey kind of colour. So I really did enjoy this puzzle. It's really nice to do. And I picked this one up because I'd already done this one, which you may have seen. I actually put a picture of this one up in the community post and I think it may have got a brief a brief look in in my Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers video because I actually did this one as practice for the first battle of the YouTube puzzlers. If you haven't seen that, go and check it out. It was really fun. It was a speed run uh, video that myself and four other YouTube puzzlers did, and it was just so much fun. So I'll link their videos as well in the description below and my video, and you can have a look at that. That was that was brilliant. And um, anyway, I actually practiced this puzzle for that, and this one's called Our British Birds, and it's the same artwork same idea it's a collage and it's all different british birds kind of um solid color in the background and watercolor kind of effect so that's why i got this one because i enjoyed this one so much and when i saw this one i thought oh, i'll get that as well so that is those two speaking of the battle of the youtube puzzlers this puzzle here is the one that we built for that so you'll have seen this already if you've seen that video it's called cute dogs in the garden and it was quite a tough puzzle i must admit that bike really slowed me down but again really really enjoyable a different kind of image again a bit more like the my little friends kind of idea so this is this is what i'm doing i'm trying to go for different types of image just to practice different types of image different methods of, of speed puzzling so yeah that was cute dogs in the garden which we did for that and then these last two are uh, other puzzles that i practiced for the Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers, including this one, which was another one of last year's championship puzzles. It's a gradient type puzzle and it's called Floral Reflections. It's basically the colors go in columns across and it's like rainbow, in the rainbow order, red, orange, yellow, green, and so on. And yeah, each column is like different colored flowers. And at the bottom, you've got the kind of the reflection aspect of it. There's kind of water and it reflects the colors of the flowers. So again, this puzzle was tougher than it looks, but I really enjoyed this puzzle and I actually got quite a good 
time on this one. I mean, there are many of these that I may redo for practice. Obviously, I will be familiar with them, but some of them I haven't done for quite a while. So it would be interesting to test different methods on them and see how much of a difference it makes on the time, whether, you know, if it's a big time difference, whether that's just because of familiarity or whether it's because I've maybe chosen a better method to puzzle it and things like that. So I will probably repeat some of these puzzles as well. But as I say, I will go over that in a separate video. So that's Floral Reflections. And then this is the last 500 piece Ravensburger that I have, sorry, Ravensburger. <laughs> I know it's pronounced Ravensburger. I even confirmed that with a German friend of mine, but I keep saying Ravensburger because that's what I'm used to saying. So if I get that wrong, I do apologize. This is my last Ravensburger puzzle and it's called what is it called? Lighthouse at Sunset. Lighthouse at Sunset. Um, so again, you perhaps will have seen a picture of this puzzle in a community post that I put up. I did a speed run on this as practice for the Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers as well. And this was one of my slower times, but I really did enjoy it. Because the thing is, there are certain images that I just don't generally build. So sometimes I think it's just because I'm not really used to building that kind of image. But this bit was quite difficult here, these dark rocks at the bottom. Um, I really enjoyed the sky because it was kind of more like a gradient. So that was really, really fun to put together. Um, and overall, I, I really enjoyed the puzzle. As I say, not so great a time on this one. And again, it's perhaps another one that I will reattempt to try and improve my time on that. So. That's all of the 500 piece Ravensburger puzzles in my current collection. There will be a lot more where that came from. Any I can pick up in charity shops, I will pick up and just, just practice, practice, practice as much as I possibly can so I can try and get a good time at the Worlds in September. Right, moving on, I've got two more Ravensburgers that I want to show you and that's these ones here. I have a little collection of 2000 piece puzzles that I've acquired recently. The first one is this one. It's called Novel Avenue and the image really is just like a it's like a street with where the novels are like buildings kind of and, and there's like animals flying about and looking out the windows in the in the books and things like that. It's quite a fantastical image but I was really drawn to this image. I thought it was really really pretty. Actually somebody on Reddit told me about a sale at a department store over here in the UK called Fenwick. I think they're mostly down in England but uh, anyway it's a department store and they sell some puzzles and they were just such good prices that I couldn't pass them up. So this one was £13 which I just thought was amazing for a 2000 piece puzzle. So I got that one and I'm really looking forward to giving that one a go. Right, this is my second 2000 piece Ravensburger. It's called the world's largest buildings, tallest buildings, highest buildings. <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. It's called the world's highest buildings. Now, I found this in a charity shop, still sealed, and it was only $7.95. So I snapped it up. I, as I say, perhaps not an image I would buy just because I'm looking for a, a, a 2000 piece puzzle with a nice image to buy. I do like the image, but again, it's not generally my thing, but I saw it and I just thought, oh, I really, I love 2000 piece puzzles for a start. I really do enjoy doing a 2000 piece puzzle. And when I saw it still sealed, I thought, oh, I'm just going to have to get that. But um, basically it's a row of the world's highest buildings. And so you can see them side on, so you can see kind of how tall they are in perspective to one another. There's like a gradient going on in the sky where it's dark over this side and a bit lighter over here. And you've got some water at the bottom. And actually, I don't know if you can see, but at the very bottom, there's in really small writing information about the actual buildings themselves and how tall they are and things like that. I actually could have done with this puzzle before I did my 360 world puzzle because there are a lot of skyscrapers in that one as well that I didn't know the names of. And if I'd have found this one first, I would have been a lot more in the know. But as it turns out, it was fine and I, I discovered what they were. But um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing that. And I was so chuffed to find this at such a great price and still sealed as well. So that is that one. And my last 2000 piece puzzle that I've got is a Clementoni. 
And it's just called Gradient, um, and it is. It's just a gradient puzzle, a bit more of a traditional kind of gradient with the colours blending in, but, you know, they're a little... It's not really rainbow. It kind of alternates from purple to yellow and green, back to purple again. And But I love the Colour Boom series. It's, from, it's one of the Colour Boom series, and I really do like the look of the Colour Boom series. I've seen them a lot and thought oh, I must get one of those, and I actually got another one recently that I've built. I'm going to show you shortly. And after doing that one, I thought, oh, I need to get more of these. And I actually found this. I was just browsing for puzzles on the internet. And I found this on a website that I do sometimes use to buy puzzles. And um, it was $9.99. It was on sale. So I thought, oh, God, I, you know, I'm going to get that. So I bought this one as well. And um, that is a very welcome new addition to my collection. So I'm going to pop that down there. So I'll do this one next. Oh, okay, it's a heavy one. It's a big one. This is the biggest puzzle in the hall. It is another Clementoni puzzle and it's called Downtown. Now you may have spotted this appearing on my shelf just behind my head. So you perhaps already know that I have this one now, but this is the other one I got from Fenwick alongside the Novel Avenue puzzle. And this was 19 pounds. It was reduced to 19 pounds and it's 6,000 pieces. I don't think I've ever bought a 6,000 piece puzzle that was so cheap. So, and I had, I have been keeping an eye on this puzzle. It's one that I was wanting to get. I really love the image on it. And even like now that I'm seeing it on the box in, in the flesh, so to speak, I love it even more. The colours are so pretty in this. It's just beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. Another 6,000 piece puzzle for me to do. I've got quite a stack of them now, but I just couldn't pass that up at 19 pound. I just thought that was a brilliant, brilliant price. And for Novel Avenue and for this one, the delivery was only three pound 50. So uh, just such a bargain, such a bargain. So that was a really good find. So I'm gonna put that down there. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly move over to this pile over to my left. This is the one I mentioned from the Colour Boom series as well. It's a 500 piece puzzle and it's called Stairs. And the name Colour Boom, they're all kind of different types of gradient really. And they're all really bright, vibrant, vivid colours. And I, it was actually um, Jigsaw Juby that told me about this and when she mentioned it and I went and had a look at it I thought oh my goodness I need to have that puzzle it's so gorgeous and I have built this puzzle I didn't do a video on it but I did put up a short and I would highly recommend this puzzle it's not as difficult as it looks it was just fun from start to finish I really really liked it and it's what's ultimately got me into this colour boom series so I will be getting more of the colour booms from Clementoni. I just think that they are really, really gorgeous puzzles. So that is Stairs. Another one from this pile to my left is another charity shop find. It's one of the Ravensburger Escape puzzles. I've already got two, one of which I've done on the channel. The other one I haven't. I think that was a charity shop find as well. And I just saw this in a charity shop window and thought, oh, I'll get that. Because I really, I really enjoyed them. I like that they've got another element that's not just the puzzle. You know, there's a bit of a bit of working out and detective work to, to involved and to be figured out. So, and this one is just slightly more difficult than the one, uh, the ones I have currently. So that'll be interesting to see how I do on that. So that one was £1.49. I hope that the pieces are all there. The box seems in pretty good condition. It's got tape on it. So touch wood, <laughs> this one is all there. It's called... The submarine, I think. Yeah, just, just called submarine, that one. So you have to escape the submarine. This one here is a Star Wars puzzle. It's in a cool cylindrical box, which I really liked about it. And I found this one in a local bookshop here in the UK. It's actually a chain of bookshops. They're called Waterstones. And there's a few of them over here in the UK. We've got one here in Stirling. And they have a little section with puzzles in. And I found this one alongside another one but I didn't get the other one I'll maybe maybe do this one first and see what the quality is like because it's by a brand I've never built before it's called Ridley's Games and it's a double-sided 1000 piece puzzle of the Millennium Falcon and it's shaped as well so it's shaped like the Millennium Falcon and on one side you've got like the exterior of the ship 
and then on the other side it's like a blueprint of the inside of the ship. So I think that's going to be really fun to do and I want to do this very soon on the channel because May the 4th is coming up and we all know that's Star Wars day so um well Star Wars fans would anyway. <laughs> So, and I am a Star Wars fan, so I really can't wait to have a go at this one. Again, it's different brand. I've never done this brand before, so I hope it's really good quality and that it will be a fun puzzle to do. And if it is, then maybe I'll get hold of the other one, which was the Death Star. Similar idea, exterior of the Death Star on one side, interior on the other side, and it's shaped. I, I think that one's just circular. I don't know if there's any bumps or kind of in, like grooves in it, but... Um, they're shaped puzzles, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. Right, I'll come back to that one shortly. This is the one I'm super excited about. I'm also very excited about these two puzzles in front of me. These came very recently, um, just this week, all the way from the US, and they were gifted to me from a company called Unified Pieces. I've never done a Unified Pieces puzzle before. I have seen them on Instagram, and when I got a message from Meezy, the chap that uh, that runs it, and he offered me a couple of the puzzles, I was I jumped at the jumped at the opportunity because I just thought their puzzles were so so cool. So one of them I've opened, I haven't built, but I've opened. I was interested to see the pieces because they are in fact random cut puzzles. And I've never actually done a random cut puzzle on the channel. So I was just interested to see how they looked. And I was so, so impressed with the way these puzzles are presented. They're just gorgeous. I'll show you the images first. So this is the one I have opened. It's called Daboom. In fact, it's that way. It doesn't really have a right way or a wrong way. It's basically a collage of different um, boom boxes, cassette players and all that kind of stuff, sort of vintage cassette players. And it's colourful. So it's got kind of blues and oranges and greens and stuff uh, like overlaying all of the um, boom boxes. So I was really, I really liked this image. I was just like drawn by it straight away. So I picked this one. It's a thousand pieces and as I say it's a random cut as well. But I, what I loved about this is that it's it like there's like a little magnetic flap and it opens up like a book and straight away you're greeted with a velvet bag, reusable bag, with the pieces inside and it's zipped at the top so they're really secure inside there and there's no plastic at all it, it's just it feels lovely it's just just luxurious and then you get you get a card like a stand um so you can maybe see the image while you're puzzling there's like a bit that you fold out and it stands up and there's a poster as well and we all appreciate a good poster with a puzzle um so i cannot wait to do these puzzles and i just want to thank unified pieces so so much for sending these to me and all the little the little gifties that came with it. I got some badges and some stickers and things like that, little keychains. So I was chuffed a bit when these arrived. So that's the boom. And this one, which is still sealed, I've not taken the cellophane off this yet. This one is called Colour Bliss. And it's a gradient. It's kind of like got geometric lines to it, sort of lots of triangles and circles and things all overlaying each other. And it's really pretty. The colours are so pretty. So I would like to do one of these on the channel, one out of the two, uh, but I don't know which one to do for the channel. I will build, we'll build them both at some point, but as far as the channel goes, I am completely undecided about which one to film for the channel. So maybe you can help me out with this. I'll put a poll up soon on the community tab and you can vote for the one you'd like to see the most. We've got Da Boom and we've got Colour Bliss. I would be super happy to do either one of them for the channel. And as I say, I will build both eventually. But which one would you like to see? Da Boom? or colour bliss. You can mention in the comments as well, but I will put a poll up on this so I can just, you know, just get the results in a week or two. Whichever one wins will be coming to the channel very soon. So I'm so looking forward to those. Thank you again, Unified Pieces, for sending these to me. This last puzzle is one I am really, really excited about. Before I get to it though, there are two more that I want to mention in this puzzle. One of which I have but you cannot see, it's off the camera, it's right over there, and it is actually the puzzle that myself 
and Judy at Addicted to Puzzles, Donna Louise at For the Love of Puzzles, Juby at Jigsaw Juby, and Jeanette uh, from Jeanette and Her Puzzles. It's the one that we are all going to speed run for the next Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers, which we know is going to take place in June. We're not going to release any more information about this until sometime in the middle of May. We'll show you what the puzzle is that we're going to be doing and we'll give you more details on uh, uh, dates and times. We've, it's, it's taken a lot of organising this because we're all in different time zones, so we've got to figure all that out. We also have a guest puzzler in the second Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers, so uh, Russell from Puzzling in Two Worlds will be joining us for that as well. But as I say, I can't show it to you just yet, but that is another puzzle in my haul that's just off the camera and I will reveal that to you um, sometime in May. And the others will reveal it as well. I'll link their channels below. There's gonna be a lot of links in this description. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to mention that one. There's also another one that I don't have yet, but I do have on order. It is on its way. I wish I could show you, I wish it was here, but it's coming from another country, so it's taken a little while to get here. But it is a 4,000 piece bluebird puzzle and it's called A Night at the Circus. The artwork's by Amy Stewart and I can't wait to do this puzzle. I'm going to be building it for my 4,000 subscriber special video. I can't tell you how overjoyed I am that I hit 4,000 subscribers this week. So I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting the channel, for watching all the videos, for commenting and engaging with the videos and just chatting with me about puzzles and just being so supportive. I thank you so much for helping me reach that milestone. And as I say, for that celebratory video, I'm going to be doing a 4,000 piece puzzle um, and it'll be a night at the circus. But I can't show it to you in the hall because I don't have it yet, but it is on its way. So that's the other one I just wanted to mention before I move on to this puzzle. <laughs> so I am super excited about this. This puzzle was sent to me recently by a chap who got in touch with me and asked me if I wanted to try out one of the puzzles from his company called Puzzle U. And they do um, custom puzzles primarily, but they do some of the puzzles as well, but they do custom puzzles and they asked me if I wanted to try out a custom puzzle. So I said that would be awesome and I had a good think about what I could have made into a custom puzzle and of course who did I decide to have as my star of the puzzle but Grace the cat <laughs> so Grace is going to be immortalized in a puzzle or is immortalized in a puzzle um, but I haven't put it together yet I'm going to be doing a video on this but I just when it came in the post and I saw the image and the box and everything I just was so pleased with it it's Grace lying on my puzzle shelf at the top in front of Las Vegas <laughs> the little plant beside his head and he just looks so cozy and relaxed in amongst my puzzles as he usually is. So I thought, yeah, I've got to have my, my wee mascot for this one. So I had this one done and I want to thank Puzzle You so much for sending this to me. Thank you very much. And I will get the video out on this very soon. I hope you're as excited about this as me. Grace is obviously is his, his permanent fixture in the channel now. He's my wee puzzle buddy. So it's just going to be so fun to do a puzzle with him in it. And the box is personalised too. So I had I decided to call it Grace on Vicky's Puzzle Shelf because <laughs> um, that's what it is. And it's a thousand pieces. So I can't wait. I can't wait to do this puzzle. So I'm very excited about that. And that is the end of today's puzzle haul. I've got a whole bunch of big puzzles to be getting through here and some really exciting ones, ones I'm really looking forward to doing. Which one do you love the most? Which one are you most excited about seeing? Let me know in the comments and also don't forget to let me know which of the two unified pieces puzzles you'd like to see me do on the channel. If you want to see pictures of both, I'll, I'll put them both up on the community tab when I've done them both and you can also check out my Instagram I do put um, lots of images and things of the puzzles I've built up on there ones I don't necessarily do on the channel and things like that so you can go and check that out my Instagram tag is down in the description so yeah let me know which ones you love which ones you can't wait to see I'm going to try and get around to all of them as quickly as I possibly can I've got a bit of a bit of a list of ones I want to do now and I'm still attempting to build this artistic Mickey puzzle that's in front of me. It's coming together. 
I've got quite a good chunk of this right hand side done, a lot of princesses and things done. And this one, this side's a little bit more sparse, but I am loving this puzzle. I just, uh, Disney puzzles are just so much fun. I love the colours in them and all the different characters. So yeah, so look out for this puzzle coming up very soon when I can get it finished. And then as soon as I've done that, I'll try and get straight on with the Bluebird puzzle for my 4,000 subscribers special. And yeah, it's just such an exciting year of puzzling so far. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But anyway, I will leave it there. I would just like to say thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, then please do leave a like on the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do subscribe. I've got so much coming this year. I hope I can fit it all in. But yeah, please do subscribe if you enjoy my videos. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!